And I think we could debate either way about it. I think in general a lot of people would say it's either equally serious or less serious. Why cats are smaller than dogs, although we've seen lots of very small animals even potentially kill people, so they certainly can inflict damage. In general, our expectations for cats are lower, right? We don't take them out on walks where they're encountering other cats all the time. We don't take them to cat parks where they're out playing with other cats. So the risk is inherently lower usually with having a cat in your household than it is with having a dog. And for whatever reason, cats are less likely to behave possessively over valuable items like bones and food and things like that than dogs are. How many of you have um, seen a cat in your shelter in your lifetime that is possessive over food or stolen items or things like that? So how accurate are these methods of identification? We've talked about all this as it relates to dogs, but in cats, there really is, are not very many studies about feline behavior as it relates to life in shelters. And they're relatively uncommon, and that's very, very frustrating. I work for the Center for Shelter Dogs, and I love, love, love dogs, but sometimes I wish I worked for the Center for Shelter Cats because there's just so much we need to do for them, but I don't. So intake questionnaire, how many of you use an intake questionnaire asking behavioral information about the cats that come into your shelter? Great, a number of you. We attempt to ask questions related to most of the common problems that cats will come in with or that will have challenges adopting them out for. So relations to people in the household, whether it be adults or children, men, women, litter box habits. Um, we ask specific questions about litter box habits in terms of how often they're happening, um, where they're eliminating, and we ask behavioral information similar to what we ask about dogs, such as how long during the day they're alone, where they sleep at night, do they like to be held, that type of thing. I'm going to show you a video here. The evaluation that I've done, I, I've, we have a cage side version of the evaluation so we can evaluate the cat at the cage. We also have a room evaluation where we take the cat to a different room. Advantages and disadvantages to both in that when I'm doing the evaluation in the cat's cage, the cat is probably a lot more comfortable there than it is taking the cat to a strange room where it's never been before. On the other side of the coin, taking, doing the evaluation in the cage, there's lots of noises, lots of other cats around that can be very, very stressful. And those are all really important things to think about. But also recognizing that when you're doing evaluations, just like with dogs, you need to have the space to do evaluations, the space to, the room to do evaluations. And if you have a shelter where you don't have a room that is fairly close to where the cats are kept to do evaluations, sometimes a cage evaluation is better than nothing. So this is going to be a video of Mindy. Mindy was a cat that um, chased her tail and bit at her tail when she got really stressed. And um, so I can see on the, the start of this little video that we're going to see next, it says, chases, attacks tail, difficult to get into cage or let out during cleaning. And then there's notes later on that say that the cat was getting better over time. This was a time before we had a separate log book where we wrote about our kitty's behavior. So here's Mindy's evaluation. She's got a big caution sticker on her. So initially just interacting from outside of the cage, seeing whether she's approaching, choosing to interact with us. And then once we've done that, we open up the cage door and repeat, just putting our hand out, see whether the cat's choosing to solicit interaction. And then the next thing we do is petting with long strokes and not patting. We can see a little head turn towards me the first time I petted her. And then we get an inhibited bite from her. And then the next thing I'm going to do, this all happens pretty quickly in our, our cage side evaluation, in our room evaluation, they have more time to adjust to us. But the next thing I do is pick her up. And then after I pick her up, I hold her for a couple seconds, and then I move closer to somewhere where if she wanted to jump up and try to escape from me, she could. You can see her tail flicking, so now I'm walking to see if she's attempting to get away, and she did decide she didn't want to be held anymore. Not surprising. Next thing um, is doing something that some cats love, some cats absolutely hate, to see cats' tolerance of things, which is 
three little taps on the rear end. So learning how to interpret their communication is very important. I'm going to show a couple slides on body language here, and some of it's going to be very boring and obvious for some of you, but I always think it's valuable to talk about, especially because a lot of people don't have as much behavioral experience with cats. And then our second step when dealing with aggression is taking action. So encouraging the cat to communicate with us in a different way by reducing their stress by behavior modification and by understanding and accepting their personality. Some problems are very, very difficult to fix because it's related to personality. It's a matter of accepting that this is a cat that doesn't like hugs. And here is yeah. another evaluation. This is a year old calico female spade. So initial interaction, what do we see? Any comments? So we're going to begin by talking about fear aggression. And fear aggression being the primary cause of aggressive behavior in shelter cats. So that's certainly the number one we thing that we see in terms of aggressive behavior and being a cat that perceives people as a threat. They're stressed, they're in a new environment. We see the cat in this picture um, displaying classic signs of stress and wanting to avoid interacting with us. Initially, they oftentimes choose to run away, similar to dogs, but they learn over time that either they can't escape, they can't run away, um, or that um, it's not an effective mechanism for them and they learn to behave aggressively to try to protect themselves. Common causes, number one, being stress. Number two, being having had a history of punishment. That probably happens a little less likely with cats than with dogs, luckily. Um, people don't punish their cats quite as much as they punish their dogs. Um, and inadequate, inadequate socialization, another very common cause in terms of not having exposed cats to many things so that new cats, new environments, new people are um, very scary and obviously fear aggression being characterized by defensive body postures as we've seen in a lot of the pictures.